<laughs> Hello and welcome to Tickly Mouth. My name is Sophie Ross and this is... <laughs> this episode is another Tickly Mouth challenge, which means you guys have given me two random numbers which equate to a recipe book on my shelf and a page in aforementioned recipe book. I've used a random number generator to decide which comment I'm going to use from all of your comments on Facebook. Thank you very much for those. And the random number generator says number six. So the sixth comment in my Facebook thread is Randall. Randall Randallson. <laughs> and he says book number 42, page 70. Ah, it's all falling out. So here it is. <laughs> it's Barolo poached fillet steak with celeriac puree. Here we go. Well, the first issue is I don't have any steak, do we? No. Right. So I'm just going to have a look through my fridge and freezer and see what meat I have. If there's anything that I could use. <laughs> we got sausages, half a roast chicken, fish cakes, sausage rolls, pork belly. This is salmon. I reckon this will be the closest thing to the cooking times of the steak. I'm just going to do it because I don't have anything else to do. And the whole point of this is to show you that you can do anything with whatever you've got. <laughs> I'm just going to defrost it. Now we need celeriac. Don't have any celeriac, but I do have sweet potatoes. Peel. And then I'm going to chop these bad boys into two centimetre dice. Grab yourself a saucepan that will snugly fit to your meat. Snug. I am going to be halving this recipe. So all of the measurements that I now say to you will be my halved versions, which will serve two or you and a small person. Half a pint of chicken stock. I can always use fish stock because they're making fish. Put that in your snuggly saucepan. Then it's asking for full body red wine. He's talking about steak here, red wine would be perfect. I think I'm going to use white wine because that would match the fish kind of lighter vibe. Um, let's see if I've got some. I do. It's very snazzy. I'm not too worried about giving Evie a dish which has wine in it. I give her bolognese with red wine in it and look, she's fine. So. So just a splash, and if you don't want to, then I think, I guess you could just substitute with a little bit more stock. So that's a quarter of a bottle. I've done about 120 ml that goes in with my fishy, stocky stuff. Three cloves of garlic, peeled and kept whole. One. Made a good plop. Two. I'm all done. Oh, good girl. Three. Ooh. Bunch of thyme. It's looking a bit tired, but it'll do something like that much. Put it in. And three whole peppercorns, which I will get out of my baseball bat. One, two, three. Better put this back together in case any burglars come. Oh, don't worry, Mr. Burglar. I'm just seasoning some things. Kupa! Get out of my house. Yeah. And a pinch of salt. Pinch. Put this on a heat. Bring to the boil and then let it simmer. Half fill a large saucepan with your boiling water from your kettle. Apparently that wants to be salted as well. Ah, it's quite a grown up dish. These will come up to the boil quicker if you put lids on them. Once your water's come up to the boil, add your sweet potato, your celeriac or whatever you've used. Ah! Jamie says to cook the celeriac for 15 to 20 minutes, but I know that sweet potato will only take about 10. Especially cut to this size. Apparently I'm going to make a cartouche. Not a cartoon, silly, a cartouche. Grease proof paper, tear off some, fold it in half. This is to put on top of the saucepan. So it's not quite as intense as putting a lid on it, but you're still keeping the moisture in with this. So make it pretty pointy. Foldy, foldy, fold, fold, fold. Until you've got that. Estimate your pan size. Hold the middle in the middle of the saucepan. And then I'm gonna chop it there. Like this. Ah. Hello! That's not the bit you need. Look through. Yeah. Woo! Oh, she doesn't want it. She hates it. 
And that's your cartouche. So when you put your meat in the saucepan, then you put a cartouche on top to keep the moisture in. Yep, cool, great. It's been about three or so minutes that the sweet potatoes have been in. So I'm gonna put the salmon in and let's see. So we can always leave things to rest, can't we? Right, I've put that on for six minutes. Leave it on. Leave it on. Leave it. Put my cartouche on top. Wash your hands if you've been touching all the raw meat or the fish. And then you just wait. When you think your meat is done, maybe like this, cover it up and leave it to rest. When your sweet potato or celeriac are cooked, you should be able to poke a knife through them and they should be able to go through really tenderly. And then drain your potato. I'm gonna drain it into a Pyrex because I wanna reuse the water. I'm gonna put some greens to the side. It's going everywhere, absolutely everywhere. That's better. Then put it back in the saucepan. I'm just gonna stick some veggies on. This is asparagus and tender stem broccoli. So this will take four minutes boiling or steaming or however you like to do it. Grab yourself a knob of butter and mash your potato-y, celeriac, whatever you've used. Like that. You wanna remove the thyme from your saucy thing. Remove the peppercorns. You'll be left with your really nice soft bits of garlic. Give them a bit of a squidge. Flip your neck. You want one non-smashed wine glass. <sighs> That'll be about right. Stick it on there, in with the garlic. Bring that up to a really fast boil and allow it to boil for a couple of minutes and then add another knob of butter. And then you are going to be serving, so be ready with plates and things. Drain your veg if you've done it, and serve. Wow. So I'm just going to cut this down the middle for me and Evie. Veggies. And then pour over your sauce. On the meat and in the potato and on the veg. Well, that looks pretty nice, doesn't it? Yeah. Should we just try a little bit? It's really yummy! Jamie Oliver is a triumph, again. Oh, my up bones. So, the steak and red wine sauce turned into a salmon and white wine sauce. The celeriac turned into sweet potato. But you know what? That really works very well. So there you have it. You can even change a steak dinner into a fish dinner, just with a little bit of confidence and just trying things out. Well, Evie wasn't a fan, but she did just spend the last half hour eating Rice Krispies out of a ramekin. She's currently asking for bedtime as well, so something must be amiss. Your sunny sad face. Thank you so much for watching again. I hope you enjoyed this substitution challenge. It was a little bit scary not knowing what I was doing, but I think that's what I'm trying to get at with Tickly Mouth, is that you can just jump into your kitchen, and as long as you've done a bit of a food shop in the last month, you should be able to find something to make that is, look at that, it's joyfully Michelin star. I'm really happy with that. So don't forget to comment in the section below and please do subscribe and tell everybody to subscribe as well because that's why we do it, we want to spread the love. Evie, can you say bye? Bye.